So in this video I would like to discuss how you would implement a concrete um, RSA cryptographic system. This is a toy system of course because we're going to be working with relatively small numbers. It's something that we want to do by hand. Um, the numbers that are needed in practice are extremely large. But um, So the first thing we need of course is two prime numbers. So let's begin with say 31 and 29. We are interested in their product, which is 899. That will be the N of our cryptographic system. Then we also are going to be interested in phi of N, Euler's function applied to N, which in this case will just be phi of 31 times phi of 29. I can do that. I can distribute the phi over the product because 31 and 29 are relatively prime. And because, once again, these two are prime numbers, 5 of 31, 5 of a prime number is just one less than the prime number. So this is going to give me 31 minus 1, that's 5 of 31. And 5 of 29 is going to be 29 minus 1. So that is 30 times 28, which is 840. Then we want to have uh, two numbers, D and E, which would together with N form our private and public keys respectively. So for these D and E's are not just any D and E's, they need to satisfy the congruence um, D times E needs to be congruent to 1 modulo phi of N. So in other words, D times E needs to be congruent to 1 modulo our phi of n in this case is 840. Alright, so in a question you would typically be given your two prime numbers and you would be given one of d or e and you would be asked to find the other one. So suppose you are given that d is equal to 11. So in other words you want to go and solve this linear congruence. You need to find a value for E which satisfies that. And moreover, this value of E needs to be less than N. It needs to be a remainder after division. Oh, 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 sorry, rather uh, it should be less than phi of N. It should be a remainder after division by phi of N. So, okay. So firstly, Looking back at our knowledge of linear congruences, we need to look at the GCD of this guy and that guy. So the GCD of 11 and 840, you can go and check that. If you factorize both of these into powers of different primes, you will see very quickly that they are relatively prime. So their GCD is 1. And 1, of course, divides 1 over there. And that's exactly what we need to happen for this linear congruence to have a solution. So this one does have a solution. Now, to go and find that solution, I need to go and express the, this GCD as a linear combination of 11 and 840. So I need to run a Euclid's algorithm. So I say, well, we start with 840, and I want to divide that by 11. So 840 divided by 11 gives me that. It goes in 76 times. So 76 times 11. And what is the remainder? So I say 840 um, minus 76 times 11 um, is equal to 4. Remainder of 4. So Euclid's algorithm enters the next iteration. So now my x becomes 11 and my y becomes 4. I'm going to divide 11 by 4. 4 goes into 11 twice and it leaves a remainder of 3. Okay, so we didn't get 0 yet. It hasn't gone in without a remainder yet. So we enter the next iteration of Euclid's algorithm. I'm now going to divide 4 by 3. Well, it's 1 times 3 plus 1. And then, of course, in the next round, I will divide 3 by 1, and it will go in without a remainder. So here, I've got my 1, which I know is the GCD. So now, I want to 
go back through the execution of Euclid's algorithm to write 1 as a linear combination of 840 and 11. So I start with the last equation. I said, well, I can write 1 as 4 minus 1 times 3. I simply made 1 the subject of this equation. Now the next equation, I can make 3 the subject of the equation, and that will allow me to rewrite this 3 here in terms of 11 and 4. So I'm going to say, well, this gives me 4 minus 1 times, and 3 I can write as 11 minus 2 times 4. Now I collect 11 terms and 4 terms together. So here is 1, 4. This is going to give me plus another 4. So this is going to be 3 times 4 um, minus 11. And of course, we can check ourselves all the time. As you progress here, you need to make sure that that still holds. Well, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 11 is 1. So we're all fine. So we've now got 1 in terms of 4 and 11. The next, the first equation here, in which we wrote in Euclid's algorithm, allows us to express 4 as a, in terms of 11 and 840. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this 4 over here by an expression in terms of 11 and 840 given to me by this first equation in Euclid's algorithm. So this thing tells me I can write 4 as 840 minus 76 times 11 and don't forget that minus 11 there. So let's collect 840 terms and 11 terms together. This gives me 3 times 840. Um, this is minus um, 3 times 76 times 11, minus 11, so 3 times 76 is 228, minus another one gives me minus 229 times 11. Alright, now I'm in a position to go and solve this congruence over here. So my x0, well, I need the coefficient of my d what would usually be a in your um, linear congruence. So the coefficient here is minus 2, 2, 9. I need to multiply that with my 1, because if you recall, this is the fact that we're going to use. My specific solution of my linear congruence is given by u times c, so the c in our case now is going to be 1. u is the coefficient of the a, which would be the coefficient of our d, of our 11, when we express the GCD of a and n, in this case our d and our phi of n, in terms of these two. So, yeah, I'm using... Um, there's my u, my c is a 1, and the GCD of these two guys is, well, let's do it in two steps, the GCD of 840 and 11 is simply 1, so this is simply going to give me minus 229. Okay, so that is a specific solution to this linear congruence over here, a value for e. That would satisfy. But moreover, we don't want just any value for e here. We want one which is a remainder after division by 840. So we knew that the general solution will be given by our specific solution plus any multiple of n divided by the GCD of a and n. So I can say that x is going to be equal to minus 229 plus, in this case, our n is 840. Divide that by the GCD of a and n, so the GCD of 11 and 840. Multiply that by any k in the integers. Well, in this case, our GCD is just 1, so this is going to be minus 229 plus any 
multiple of 840. So I want to use this to get a value for E, which is between 0 and strictly less than 840. So I'm going to take K to be 1. So I'm going to take my E to be minus 229 plus 1 times 840, which is gives me 600. And 11. Okay, so there I'm now in a position to set up my cryptographic system. I can say that the public key consists of n, which is 899, and e, which we just calculated as 611. The private key, on the other hand, is given by n again, 899, and the d, which we were given to begin with, which is 11. So there we have set up the cryptographic system. Let's recap. We were given two large primes, and we were given the d of the, of the, of the private key. With that, I went and calculated phi of n, which is always easy because n is made up of the product of two primes, two different primes specifically. And then I went and set up this congruence and I followed the usual procedure of following a linear, solving a linear congruence. I got a specific solution. If this specific solution had been within the bounds that I wanted, in other words, something non-negative and less than phi of n, non-negative in IE and less than 840, I would have taken just that. As it was, it was actually a negative number. It was not within those bounds. So I had to go and look at how the general solution of this linear congruence would look and then pick a suitable value of k which would give me a solution which would be in those bounds. In this case, I just had to add 1 times 840 and it gave me 611 which would be the solution of this linear congruence, which lies between 0 and 839. And so I got my E for my public key, and there I have my public and my private keys.